What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly sports history for January 23rd, 2023. Huge, huge win for my Owls yesterday, knocking off number one Houston 56 55. Uh, they were pretty much like holding on to like a one, one to three point lead most of the game. I believe it was tied at halftime, but very, very good win for them. Um, it's a shame that they had those two shitty losses to Maryland Eastern Shore and Wagner. Um, if they don't won those two games, their resume might not be looking too shabby. Uh, they got Rutgers under their belt, which they're, well, until they lost. They were a top 25 team. Uh, Nova was top 25 when they beat them. If they could go on a nice little run, that win looks better. But those two losses are, are, are haunting them right now. But... Good win, beating number one. It was the first time they did that since 2000 when they beat Cincinnati. Uh, that 99-2000 team was one of my all-time favorite teams. Um, but hard to believe that it's been that long since they've actually beaten or knocked off the number one team. So good win for the Owls. Uh, Flyers lost 5-3 to the Jets, which uh, Jets are a pretty decent team. So that's, a, that's still a good loss, especially after – beating Detroit and flopping spots in the, the standings with them the other day. And we know who the Eagles will play next week. They will play the 49ers for the NFC Championship and the right to go to the Super Bowl. Not a huge, rich playoff history between these two teams. They only met once. Uh, that was back in the 96 wild card game when uh, uh, Coy Detmer was the quarterback. or No, I guess it was Ty Detmer back then. And he couldn't do anything they lost 14 nothing i remember that that game was like rainy and windy and whatever so it was the only time other time they played and that was out at the old candlestick so more on that game as the week progresses the opening line that i saw this morning was eagles minus two and a half which i think sounds sounds about right um i will say after watching that game i don't necessarily i didn't think either team looked overly impressive i know all the talk is like that san francisco winning streak but they they played like a team that was ready to lose so hopefully that will carry over into sunday's game but this day in philly sports history we're going to take it back to 2005 and it's for the 2004 or five i i I still don't understand how they do that but either way January 23rd, 2005, it was the NFC Championship game. The Eagles were there for the fourth straight year. This time they were taking on Michael Vick and the Falcons, and they finally got over the hump. The fourth time was the charm for them. Uh, Dorsey Levins got the, the scoring started in the first quarter with a touchdown run. Atlanta answered with a field goal. Then Chad Lewis made his first of two touchdown catches to make it 14-3. to um, Atlanta did come back right before the half, and it was 14-10 to 10 after work done, took it in. And I just remember sitting in the stands, freezing, but kind of being a little, little concerned at this point because this is typically how, uh, with the exception of the, uh, the Carolina game, which just was a snoozer, they kind of were in close games in the first half. Uh, but two David Akers field goals and Chad Lewis's second half t- or second touchdown of the half, um, or not of the half of the game, uh, was enough to uh, send them to Super Bowl Thirty Nine. The Eagles did not, or the Falcons did not score any more points that game. The defense played well. Um, definitely was great to finally get over that hump. Chad Lewis's touchdown catch. Uh, he broke his foot, though, so that was definitely disappointing because he wasn't going to be able to play in the Super Bowl then. But just finally, like, just the, the, the feeling of relief uh, of finally getting over that, that hump and get, making it to the Super Bowl, they would go on to play the Patriots who beat the Steelers. Um, so, again, no Pennsylvania Bowl. There was always, like, that – I through that whole run, it, there was always the chance that it would be the Eagles-Steelers in the Super Bowl – which I, I don't think anybody outside of Pennsylvania wants to see, but maybe someday if the, the Steelers get it together. Uh, but I will say, like I, I just remember, and thinking back on it now, we kind of probably should have realized this, that just the emotional impact of them finally getting over uh, that hump and making it to the Super Bowl, like Brian Dawkins went in his speech when he was like, hallelujah. And the, I think the Daily News headline that day was finally. Um, I, I think 
set them up to not play well or, or be ready necessarily for the Super Bowl, which I think maybe led into some of, Don- some of Donovan's play, maybe led to some of Andy Reid's play calling. But I, I, I do have some stuff on the um, in the pipeline for this Super Bowl, so we'll get more into that. But for today, it's the, the NFC Championship game. They beat the Falcons 27-10 to finally win the Super or go to the Super Bowl. Uh, it was cold. It was blustery. It was. It snowed the night before, and I remember I, I thought I was going to get stuck at work. Um, I was working up in Souderton, living in King of Prussia at the time, and it was like a blizzard. Uh, I thought I was going to get stuck at work, and then it just it was cold. It was like I think twenty six degrees and zero wind chill. Like the wind chill was zero, and it just was cold. We finally though got to go back out. We had our. Um, we, we did not have champagne. I, I learned my lesson. The, the previous two years, the whole experience with the, the bottle not breaking, I'm like, I'm not getting champagne. But we had high life in the car, champagne and beers. But we didn't get to enjoy them because it was so cold that no sooner were we taking the lids off, the beers were like, you could see it. It was just like instantly freezing. Um, so decided to go home and just finally enjoy getting to the Super Bowl. But – the big key, like, because it was windy, and like, I mean, Donovan had 180 yards, two touchdowns. Brian Westbrook had almost 100 yards rushing. It was very much a defensive game on both sides, and I think um, some of the key highlights for us was holding Michael Vick to like um, 136 passing yards and and 26 running yards. Like he couldn't do anything, and that was when he was like peak Michael Vick. Um, but the, like the lasting memory would be other than. Dawkins going down as the time was running out and picking up the pylon and slamming it. The um, lasting memory was Dawkins' hit on Algie Crumpler when he basically broke him in half. Um, and, I, and that had to have hurt, especially as cold as it was. But, oh well. They, one of my favorite memories of being in the link and, and finally getting over that, like I said, getting over that hump. And I think as much as we wanted them to win the Super Bowl, um, and I, not that we were not rooting, I can at least speak for myself, and I think the team played this way as well. It was sort of like you spent all that energy and emotion to get getting there, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, shit, we're here. Now what are we going to do? It's kind of like when a basketball team comes back from like a big deficit and like, like they spend all the energy catching up, like catching up in the second half, catching up, and they tie it. And then all of a sudden they have nothing left to to finish out the game. I feel like that's what happened to the Eagles this season. Um, and unfortunately it wouldn't be until, um, what, I guess almost 12 years later that they would finally, finally win a Super Bowl. Uh, hopefully we got another one on the horizon. We'll have more on the Eagles versus 49ers coming up this week. Great win for my Owls. Always good when you hit beat the number one team in the country. And to me, that's a Final Four team they beat. Uh, they didn't play well. Part of that was due to Temple's defense. But I'll take that as a win. Hopefully, somehow, they can parlay that into to getting into the tournament. Uh, but go have yourselves a Monday. My voice is still not 100% there yet. But go Birds. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.